You'd be surprised how many real estate agents don't really understand what an appraisal is or how it's done. Many think it's just like the CMA that they come by and say, no, it's just a bunch of averaging, right? You take a bunch of recent sales, you average them, and then there's your price. Or you do some square footage model and you go, this is what that sold for, that's how many price per square foot it is, so you apply that to the new house. Well, that's not the case at all. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a couple inside secrets about what an appraisal actually is, how it's calculated, and a couple things that you can do to make sure that your appraisal is done accurately. And lastly, a couple little things that most people think that factor into an appraisal or factor into how much their home is worth, but it really doesn't. Okay, appraisal. What is an appraisal? An appraisal is literally an opinion of value during a specific time. That's really the definition of it. That's the book definition, that's actually what it is. So it's someone that is doing the appraisal that is going to give you an opinion of value based on a number of parameters. Now these days, most appraisals are done through appraisal management companies or AMCs. So it's not usually that local guy that you see sometimes. Often, it's some appraiser that the mortgage company has picked out that is a long way away. They could be driving an hour or two or three away and coming in to do your appraisal. So that presents a couple challenges. They may not know the area, may not understand that just because there's square footage in a certain price of a house on this side of the street, that that same square footage in that same size house equals on the other side of the street or across town, because we all know that real estate can be micro local, meaning that just on the same side of the street, different address, different zip code can mean a world of difference when it comes to value in the marketplace. So that's one of the disadvantages of AMCs. So when you understand that, then you see something that just comes back and the comps don't look quite right. Those are the comparable sales that they're using in their uh, inspection report or appraisal report. Once you see those and they don't match up, then you can go, hey, th these don't match. And you can go back to your lender and say, I don't think these comps are very valid. And then you may have a case and they may issue another appraisal. But let's get down to what an appraisal is and how it is factored. Well, first of all, you have the appraiser is going to go out and they're going to pull data from a couple different sources. One, if there are previous recent appraisals on that property or other properties in the area, they're going to try and get their hands on those. Second is the, uh, the information that they can get probably from the county or the city, and that's the record of deeds. What's going on in, in the various properties in and around that area? What is actually, what does this property actually contain according to the county? What's legal there? because you can't just go off of what Zillow has, for goodness sakes, or anything that you see on the MLS. It has to be confirmed. This is what the deed says. It says it's this many, uh, it, the location is right here and it's got this many acres on it, and that's what it is. They have to confirm that, and they have to use an official record, again, not Zillow, an official record to do that. The next thing that's gonna come up is using the county or city assessor's office. Now, many assessments are done a variety of different ways across the country, but some are very accurate, so they will play a part in there depending on how they're calculated, and that's really a topic for another day, but that will factor in the assessed value. Not as a comparison to use to say that, well, because it's assessed at this, we think the price will be pretty close to that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is the fact they need to pull that in and see, okay, what are they counting for square footage? What's above grade, what's below grade? What other improvements come with the facility? What should I expect to see when I go to the property? So that's really the main purpose behind pulling the information from there. And then we come to the last piece and that's the sales in the area, actual sales. Now normally they pull this from a source like uh, the MLS if they have access to that. Or again, they're going back to the county to pull recent sales in that area. Not Zillow, they're not looking there. I've seen people say to others, uh, I've seen agents tell other people to go to Zillow and make sure that you claim your home and then make sure that you put pictures in there and Make sure that you have the square footage correct on Zillow so that when the appraiser looks at Zillow, they'll get the numbers right. That's just not how it happens. <laughs> if you're, in the, okay, let me back up a second. If your appraiser is using Zillow and quotes Zillow, fire them. Fire them on the spot. If your lender is demanding that they use an appraiser that uses Zillow, fire the whole lot. Go someplace else because that is moronic, idiotic, and quite frankly wrong. They could probably have their license taken away for such silliness. But listening? let's get back to the main point. 
the, they pull all these points of data and this is what they're gonna gather together. This is before you actually go out and do anything. You have to confirm exactly the property that you're talking about. Then you go to what is called the sales comparison or market data approach. This is the, this is the method that is used by most appraisers in valuing real estate today. There's a cost evaluation that is done for insurance purposes. That's how much you know of replacement value of certain items. That's a much harder thing to do, and that's usually not what that's usually not what is done for real estate appraisals. They use the uh, sales comparison or market data approach. This is comprised of mainly three different things. You have the recent sales. That's number one, and then the next thing is similar features, and then it's the quality of the build and the materials. Now these are, are judgment calls because the recent sales are what they are, and if you don't have recent sales in the area that are recent enough and similar enough, that one and two factor, then you really have to expand that scope out. And this is where you get into trouble in a lot of places that don't have the numbers to go with it, is you have to expand the geographic footprint of where you're looking for comparables, and you also have to go back in time farther. Ideally, you have things within 30 days that are very similar in your neighborhood. Well, that's, that's the great news. Then it kind of bumps out to about 90 days. You're still okay. Now, if you got to go out to six months and beyond, well, now you're talking more of a longer term economic cycle and different things can happen and it can really skew the numbers and that's not really where you want to be. So the more you have, the better off you are. But it does change over time because it's most important to get the similar house. Even if it is across town, it's the similar house. That's a tough, tough, tough call to make. And this is where that AMC that we talked about earlier, that's where that comes in and really can bite you if the person who is really looking for that similar home goes across town and it just doesn't work because the pricing features, the schools, whatever, is just very different. Or it does. You got to have somebody that knows and that AMC person may not know that and that local appraiser that you deal with may. So maybe that big company, maybe that lender is using the AMC and a local appraiser is using that. That's great, but just to know that you have some of these roadblocks that could potentially screw you up in there. The next point I wanna talk about is square footage. A lot of people like to talk about square footage going, hey, I've got a finished basement, so my house is now 5,000 square feet because it's a 1,000 square feet ba square foot basement. So we're gonna count that, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, it's counted as square footage, but appraisals have weighted values that are that are given for above grade, below grade, and then basement type areas. So in other words, you have a, an above grade. That's everything that's a completely above grade. And that's measured a little bit differently from like a walkout basement, or if it's kind of on the side of a hill, it's not really a basement, but it's kind of partially covered on one side, or a completely in the ground contained, you have to walk out and up basement. Each of these holds a different value for a variety of reasons. Again, there's more reasons than I can share with you right now, but know that the square footage and the value per square foot is calculated differently for each. So what do you do about this? How can you go about and make sure that you are getting the best appraisal, uh, getting the best appraisal for your house. How can you go about finding who your appraiser is? Well, one, ask. Ask who they are using and where they're coming from. You are well within your right to do that. Just say, hey, uh, who are you using? Oh, a guy from, you know, I'm up here in North, Loudoun County in Northern Virginia, and somebody says, oh, we're bringing in a guy from Fredericksburg. Ooh, that's a long ways away. It's technically by some people's standards, Northern Virginia, but that's a long, long ways away. That's an hour and a half south of here through a variety of different markets. That's not gonna be a good thing. I'd rather have somebody come from Maryland, which is closer to us that way, than coming from Fredericksburg. So you can ask that question. The second thing you wanna find out is, are your t inf is your information that is in your county, is it correct, is it up to date? Did you build on, did you do an addition and didn't get it permitted through the county? That's, uh, that's, that's bad juju right there. Set you up for a lot of other things other than appraisals. But is everything accurate and up to date? Are all the facilities, all the features, all the things in your house, are all those categories filled out in the county tax assessor's office? Are they accurate? And if they're not, give them a call and say, hey, I don't think this is accurate. And then you can adjust that. That could mean that you raise the livable square footage in your home, thereby increasing your real estate taxes. But would you rather pay a little bit more in taxes and be doing the right thing and then get your appraisal done properly, or 
Do you want to just kind of ignore whatever's on the county assessor site and then hope that the appraisal comes in and you can sell your house for what you think it's worth? I don't know. Up to you. It's not my call to make. That's yours. But I know where I stand. I'd correct the information and make sure that you can argue on the basis of fact and not what you hope and what you think you got. So let's move into that. What are some things that you can do? What are some things that about your house that do not factor into the appraisal value at all or market value via your real estate agent when, they're C when they do their CMA? First thing, it doesn't matter how much you paid for the house. Yeah, you look at it, but it doesn't matter. I don't care if it was last year, two years ago, eight months ago or 18 years ago, how much you paid for the house just does not factor into the value. It's not relevant there. Also, how much you paid for improvements in your house doesn't matter. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. It's really nice. That is a really nice patio and it's really neat that you got this you know, Brazilian stone that's only available in three places on the planet and you got it put out there and laid by Tibetan monks. That's all wonderful. I'm glad you paid for that. That's a really cool story, but it's not going to add that much value to the real estate. It's just not. That the fact that you used higher end materials, if most of the homes in your neighborhood do not use higher end materials, is going to make you stand out in a way that's negative because now you will have outlaid more money than your neighborhood can hold. This goes back to that don't improve yourself out of, the, out of your own neighborhood. So if you've done that, and you put some good money down into your own house for your own enjoyment, that's kind of where the value stops, for your own enjoyment, it doesn't get calculated into how much your house is worth in an appraisal or in market value. Now, someone else, a buyer, could come in and go, I love that Brazilian stuff. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen. I'll give you more money for that. Well, good, then the market works. That's wonderful, that's a perfect scenario. But for most people, they're gonna look at that and go, well, I don't know. I could get the one down the street, all the same house, but it doesn't have that thing, and it's $20,000 less on the sales price. And they might go with that one because they just don't care that much about that. So this is really how that comes down. This is why those, the comparables that you use and how similar they are makes a difference. So what happens is when you get that similar house, house A has these features, house B has, well, those features. So now you look at the various prices that they had. So there was a price, they both sold within a, the rough uh, same uh, time frame, and this had five features and this had four features. Now you figure out the difference and you go, well, that was the difference in the value of that one extra feature that this place didn't have. So that's how it comes down to it. It doesn't matter how much you paid for those improvements. It doesn't matter how much you paid for the house. And last up, it doesn't matter how much you owe on the mortgage either. These are very important considerations to talk to your real estate agent about because coming in with a net gain on the sale of your house is very, very important. Not sales price, but net gain because you need to be able to pay off that old mortgage. You need to be able to recoup a down payment, pay your taxes, pay your closing fees, all of those types of things. You need to be able to do those. And that's part of your real estate agent's job is to work toward your net. But when it comes to the appraisal, how much you paid for the house, how much you paid for the improvements and how much you owe on the mortgage just doesn't factor in. So I'm going to leave it there for right now. Uh, if you have any questions about this and you wanted me to dig deeper into some of those areas that I kind of left alone because you can very easily go down Alice's rabbit hole for that one. Uh, if you have any of those questions, pop me in the comments down below and be sure to like and please share this video. Share this video. It means so much to me when you do that. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.